The animal kingdom is crazy. You'd like to think it's nice and simple, but I promise it isn't. Cause did you know that some animals can actually breed with each other and create all new creatures? Can a dog and a cat breed to create a dat? Can a giraffe and mouse breed to create a gouse? Maybe a fox and duck can breed to create a fu- Oh, maybe I shouldn't say that one. But hey, let's find out which crazy hybrids are real. These are bizarre animal hybrids that actually exist. Number 20. Tigon, Male Tiger and Female Lion You've seen a tiger and you've seen a lion, but have you seen a tigon? This is what a lion and tiger crossbreed into. Amazing stuff, right? A tigon is the offspring of a male tiger and a female lion, which is a lioness. They are often smaller than lions and tigers, but they definitely look like a combination of both animals. Male tigons are infertile, which means they aren't able to carry on that half lineage. Although females are capable of giving birth, so a female tigon can most likely have relations with a tiger or lion to keep the genes going. Except that's not likely to happen because lions and tigers don't mate together in the wild. They're bred through artificial insemination or in zoos. Tigons were bred and exhibited in zoos during the 19th century, but the practice is now banned. Now, the question that's on everyone's minds. What do they look like? Well, that can depend on how the genes interact. If more than one Tigon is born, the entire litter can look different. Their coat tends to be a yellowish-brown color, which is darker than lions, but lighter than tigers. Male Tigons also don't grow full manes, but they do have some rough. They don't tend to grow as large as their parents, and this is because lionesses have growth inhibitors. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Liger, Male Lion and Female Tiger Ligers are hybrids of male lions and female tigers, but they really shouldn't exist at all. They don't mate in the wild, and it's generally only through irresponsible breeding practices that they come to live. You might think a liger would look quite remarkable with a stripy body and mane like a lion, but genetics don't really work that way. They tend to look like a blend of both, with lion-like faces and a few subtle stripes. They can chuff like tigers and roar like lions, and they weigh around a thousand pounds. Ligers also eat about 50 pounds of raw meat a day and love spending their time swimming and playing in water. It's important to understand that ligers are not always healthy animals, which is why most reputable animal facilities don't condone mixing the species. Many develop genetic disorders, while others seem okay as cubs, only to grow up with neurological disorders. Many also die at birth from birth defects, or they put their mother at risk. Ligers tend to be much larger than their parents, which means deliveries can be complicated and life-threatening. Typically, the tiger has to give birth by C-section, or she might die in labor. Number 18. Savannah Cat, Domestic Cat, and Serval As if a domestic cat wasn't challenging enough to own, we've gone and made them even more so with the Savannah Cat. Savannah cats are hybrids of domestic cats and servals. Servals are wild cats native to Africa and have light coats and dark spots and stripes. The resultant combination of these two cats is the largest cat breed we have today. Savannah cats became popular in the 1990s and were officially registered as a new breed in 2001. By 2012, the International Cat Association also accepted them as a championship breed. They are tall, slim, and can weigh up to about 24 pounds. The stronger the serval genes, the larger the savannah cat can be. To be acceptable to the TICA breed standard, their coats are generally spotted. However, non-standard patterns also include snow, cinnamon, blue, marble, rosette, chocolate, and lilac. Many people purchase savannah cats not just for their looks, but for their temperament. They tend to be quite loyal to their owners and are trainable for leash walking and games of fetch. They can also be exceptionally social with cats, dogs, and people, but may growl and hiss when seeing strangers. Their talents, like jumping eight feet into the air and getting into cupboards, mean some property alterations can be required for their ownership. Number 17. Jaglion, male jaguar and female lion. 
One animal you may not have heard of before is the jag lion, and that's because it shouldn't exist and only came to exist by accident. There are only two recorded in the world and no other written records of any breeding between jaguars and lions. So how did a female lion and a male jaguar come to make two beautiful babies? It's a love story to rival all love stories. Ontario, Canada charity, the Bear Creek Sanctuary, takes in wild animals to rehabilitate them. These animals tend to be injured, abused, or abandoned. Diablo the Jaguar and Lola the Lion both arrived at Bear Creek around the same time. They were both young and required bottle feeding. They spent all their time together as cubs and were also housed together. While sanctuary workers attempted to separate them, they weren't able to. Lola wouldn't eat without Diablo and both suffered severe depression and anxiety. So they just tried their best to separate them when Lola was in heat. Except that didn't work and Lola ended up giving birth to two Jaguars. Jaglion cubs. Jazara was born predominantly black, while Tsunami was fairer with the dark spots of her father. Updates in 2020 show the Jaglions to be healthy 14 year old adults. Number 16 Rolfin Male False Killer Whale and Female Bottlenose Dolphin. A wolfin is essentially a hybrid of a dolphin and a whale, but it's definitely more complicated than that. And that's why anytime you say wolfin to a scientist, they have to try really hard not to lose their cool. Typically, this animal comes about through the mating of a female bottlenose dolphin and a male false killer whale, which is an oceanic dolphin. So it's not really a whale and a dolphin. As is the case with many crossbred animals, they tend to happen more frequently in captivity, although they've also been spotted in the wild. <laughs> in 2018, scientists spotted a melon-headed whale and rough-toothed dolphin hybrid in the ocean off Hawaii. The melon-headed whale is technically a dolphin, which is why some scientists get so furious about people calling them wolfins. But the name stuck after a hybrid was born at Sea Life Park in 1985. It was a bottlenose dolphin and a false killer whale. The resultant baby was called Kekaimalu and was used to help children learn about genetics. Scientists believe that hybridization can sometimes happen in the wild when there's a decline in population within parental species. Number 15. Koi Dog – Male Coyote and Female Dog most of us know that dogs have been bred with other related animals, like the wolf, for example. But were you aware of the koi dog, a cross between a dog and a coyote? This hybrid dates back many years. When a male coyote and a female dog love each other very much, a koi dog is born. As the offspring of these animals can be fertile, you can see around four generations of successful hybrids. Surprisingly, koi dogs have actually been around since long before the European colonization of the Americas. They were deliberately bred in pre-Columbian Mexico since coyotes were held in high regard. It was also common practice to breed coyotes with dogs and Mexican wolves to create a loyal and temperamental guard dog. During the 1980s, coyotes were taken for their fur in Illinois. It's thought that as much as 15% of the 10,000 or so coyotes taken were koi dogs, based on their cranial measurements. So out of a population of about 30,000 at that time, as many as up to 4,500 could have been koi dogs. Then out of 379 wild canid skulls taken in Ohio, up to 1988, 10 were koi dogs. This showed that, at the time, hybrids were prevalent in areas with dispersed coyote populations. Number 14. Leopon, Male Leopard and Female Lion Leopons are the offspring of male leopards and female lions. It's more common to see such hybrids in captivity, but there has been one reported, but not verified, case of it happening in the wild. Records state that leopons have existed in zoos in Germany, Japan, and India. There was also a leopard, which is a leopardess and lion hybrid, in Italy. One report stated that a lioness expelled from her pride in the wild teamed up with a male leopard. When she was in heat, she was mated by the leopard and gave birth to leopon cubs. However, experts believe these hybrids in the wild were unlikely because the leopard would almost certainly die from pregnancy complications or the birth. 
We have proof that they have been successfully born in captivity, though. In 1904, a news article stated that hybrids were born to a leopard at the carnival grounds. Another article in the Buffalo Inquirer in 1913 stated that a half-lion, half-leopard skin was given to the Zoological Society of London. It had been born in India with spots like a leopard, but an unmarked stomach and tail tufts. It lived for two years. Out of these Leopons reported to have been born, though, they never tended to live very long. It may go to show that we really shouldn't be messing with nature. Number 13. Toyger, Asian Leopard Cat and Domestic Cat. Toygers are a hybrid of your standard domestic cat and an Asian leopard cat. They're still a cat you can welcome into your home, but they have a few interesting features compared to your regular house cat. It was actually the daughter of the original breeder of Bengal cats that came up with the concept of a toyger, Judy Sudan. She started a breeding program with a domestic short hair tabby and a big boned Bengal. The resultant cat is up to 15 pounds with a 15 year life expectancy and an attractive coat. Typically, a brown mackerel tabby will have dark markings with a white underside and vibrant orange underneath the markings. Their eyes are generally hazel or brown. Their personalities tend to be quite different from standard domestic cats as well. They have a high need for affection and play, and they're also vocal, pet-friendly, energetic, and intelligent. They are reasonably easy to train, but do require a lot of stimulation. As Toygers can get themselves into trouble with fights while also being desirable to thieves, they are best adopted or purchased as indoor cats. Number 12. Roller Bear, Polar Bear, and Grizzly Bear Scientists already knew that polar bears and grizzly bears would hybridize in captivity and even produce fertile offspring. But as the Arctic warms, this same hybridization may become commonplace in the wild. It wasn't until 2006 that proof of growler bears, which are grizzly bears and polar bear hybrids, was actually confirmed in the wild. A man hunting in the Canadian Arctic shot a strange-looking bear that had brown patches on its white fur. DNA testing confirmed it was part grizzly bear, part polar bear. Just four years later, hunters killed another bear, which was confirmed as a second-generation offspring of a growler bear. Two more unconfirmed bears have also been found in northern Canada and Alaska. Scientist Brendan Kelly said that polar bears branched off of grizzly bears and evolution can take a long time. It would take several years of isolation for the two bear species to eventually no longer be able to hybridize. That clearly hasn't happened yet if they're getting together, and it might actually be a sign of things to come. Brendan said that the bears branched off of each other, but those branches can also grow back together. Are we going to be seeing more brown and white spotted bears in the near future? Number 11. Narluga, Narwhal, and Beluga Whales Narwhals are medium-sized toothed whales, while beluga whales are arctic and subarctic cetacean. Both belong to the Monodontidae family, which means it's probably not out of the question for hybridization to occur, with the resultant offspring being called Narluga. Apparently, scientists found evidence of such hybridization in Greenland based on skulls. In 1990, researchers found a strange skull in Greenland's Disco Bay, but that doesn't mean people didn't already have their suspicions. Inuit hunters said that narlugas have skulls that look like both beluga whales and narwhals. They have narwhal tails, the pectoral fins of belugas, and gray bodies. But we needed DNA proof, and we got it. DNA analysis confirmed that a female narwhal and a male beluga had produced a male narluga. The skull was the first hybrid evidence, and it's now present in the Natural History Museum of Denmark in Copenhagen. Both belugas and narwhals have the same number of chromosomes, which means it's actually not that difficult for them to mate. There have been about 57 known cases of whale and dolphin hybridization, and about 14 known hybrids of the fin whale and blue whale. Number 10. Kama, male camel and female llama. Camel and llama hybridization is probably a lot more realistic than you might think. 
The resultant offspring is called a kama, and they come from male dromedary camels from Asia and female South American llamas. They may come from different places and be different sizes, but they're actually distant relatives since they evolved from the same ancestor, the camelid species from 30 million years ago. Camels can grow up to 1,000 pounds and 57 inches at the shoulder. Their soft fur is shorter than that of llamas, and they have cloven hooves, long tails, and short ears. They don't have humps like the dromedary camel. Pamas are herbivores and eat many different shrub types. Like camels, they can drink massive amounts of water and survive for long periods without it. They also make noises like camels. Even though such a hybridization actually makes a whole lot of sense, it's complicated. Male llama and female camel hybrids are not possible, and commas tend to be created with artificial insemination due to the huge size differences between the two animals. When the time comes for the babies to be born, after the same development period as both camels and llamas, they're actually relatively small. A baby camel weighs around 66 pounds, and a llama is about 22 pounds. A comma, though, is born weighing about 11 pounds. Number 9. Beefalo – Bison and Domestic Cattle When hybridization among animal species happens, it's typically on purpose and reasonably well controlled. Oftentimes, human intervention is required throughout the entire breeding and birthing process. That's not quite the case with bison and domestic cattle hybrids called beefalo, and it's actually getting out of control. Beefalo were bred in 1906 by Charles Jones. He knew bison were low in numbers and wanted to produce a robust commercial animal. He eventually gave up, and all remaining beefalo were managed by the state with limited hunt licenses. But then, when they ventured into the Grand Canyon, where hunting isn't allowed, their numbers ballooned. Now they're simply out of control. There are thought to be about 600 in the Grand Canyon breeding at an alarming rate. They can drink the very few water holes dry, compact the soil, and leave the ground bare of plants. They also affect rare plants, insects, and ancient ruins. Attempts to fence them off and limit their grazing have also been futile, since they'll just break through a fence. These strong creatures will even hit cars if they get between them and their babies. The only time their population can attempt to be controlled is if they venture out of the no-hunting areas. Number 8. Zubron – Domestic Cattle and Vizent – Zuber Zubrons are hybrids of Wiesent, a European bison known as Zuber in Polish, and domestic cattle. It was first created in 1847 by Leopold Woliki, but may have existed before his intervention. Zubron were considered as a domestic cattle replacement as they were not as susceptible to disease and also required minimal husbandry. Male Zubrons could weigh up to 2,600 pounds and females up to 1,790 pounds. They were also hardy in harsh weather. After 16 years of experiments, 71 animals were born, which included the very first Zubron to a Zubron mother. During the 1980s, the breeding program wasn't seen as satisfactory for a variety of reasons. Firstly, there were difficulties with the Polish socialist economy. There had also been very little interest in them, and there were fears of crossbreeding between the Zubron and endangered wild Wiesent. It also probably wasn't ideal that the mothers didn't experience parturition, which is when uteruses contract to get ready to give birth so cesarean sections were standard. First-generation males were also infertile, but at least females were fertile and could be crossbred with other species. The program was stopped, and one herd of animals was kept at the Bieloveski National Park. However, in 2007, some press releases suggested that experimentation and possibly breeding had continued in Karolev of Greater Poland. Number 7. Joe, Domestic Cattle and Yak Joe is a common livestock animal in Tibet consisting of domestic cattle and yak. The resultant male offspring are Joe, while females are called Jomo. Joe have facial features resembling cows, but their horns and shaggy coats are more closely related with yaks. Jomo tend to be much smaller than yaks, but larger than domestic cattle. If you make a trip to Mongolia, you might also see Kainag, Zo, or Jo, which are actually similar hybrids. In the same way that purebred yaks are used as pack animals in the mountains, so are Jo. Their strength and physiological 
characteristics are crucial for long journeys with heavy loads through mountains. In challenging conditions, Joe come into their own. They can actually be a bit more agile than yaks because of their ancestry. However, with yak breeding, they don't have the pulmonary complications that cows have at high altitudes. But they also serve a purpose down the mountains as well. Like cows, they are bred for milk, meat, and hide production, and as commodities for resale. Although they don't tend to have value for breeders because male offspring are sterile, but you can breed Jomo back to purebred cattle or yak. Number 6. Iron Age Pigs, Tamworth and European Wild Boar Iron Age pigs are crosses between rare Tamworth pigs and European wild boars. They are given their name Iron Age Pig because they look a bit like pigs from prehistoric artwork. Feral boar pig hybrids exist throughout Australia, Eurasia, the Americas, and in many places that European settlers ended up importing wild boars for use as game animals. Many hybrid variables have actually become pests, but there is some potential in intentional breeding. The project Iron Age Pig began in the 1980s to backbreed, which involved recreating the looks of pigs from ancient Europe. Completely free ranging, other than a very large. A male wild boar was crossed with a Tamworth sow to recreate the look. However, Iron Age pigs are typically only raised for the specialty meat market in Europe. As is probably quite authentic, they tend to be aggressive and far more challenging to manage than the more common purebred domesticated pigs that most pig farmers prefer. When Iron Age pigs are born, they have stripes that fade with age, just like is thought to be the case with those from 10,000 BC. It's not all that easy to get your hands on one, but if you're after meat, you can purchase half a pig in Europe from specialty providers for around $250. Number 5. Game Bird Hybrids Hey, well, why did the chicken cross the road? To mate with another bird and become a hybrid. That was an awful joke, but we're being serious. That's what actually happens. Game bird hybrids are what you get when you cross game birds like ducks with domestic poultry. Sometimes it happens in the wild, but it's definitely more common with human intervention. Why do we keep doing this? It seems like more of a hobby than anything. In a book written by Charles Darwin, he noted that someone called Mr. Hewitt had a great experience crossing cock pheasants with fowls. It was also determined that crossing a fowl results in a bird of an increased size than either parent bird. And people are getting quite creative with what they come up with. There are hybrids of chickens and Japanese quail through artificial insemination, and even guinea fowl from Africa with pea fowl from Asia. There's no limit to our imagination, really. Attempts have been made with chickens and turkeys without much luck. Still, mallard and Aylesbury duck hybrids are often seen in British parks. I truly wish we'd just leave animals alone, or we might have another Jurassic Park on our hands. Number 4. Kinney male horse and female donkey. When you cross a stallion, a male horse, with a jenny, a female donkey, you get a henny, a domestic equine hybrid. The result is an animal that's actually quite different temperamentally and physiologically from the mule. Compared to mules, hennies are smaller with more muscular legs, thicker manes, and shorter ears. They also tend to have more of a horse head than a mule, and their temperaments can vary. It's thought that the smaller size of a henny may be because of the female donkey having a much smaller womb than a female horse, limiting growth potential. Mules can come in many sizes, like miniatures, to over 15 hands, which means hennies can also grow up to be various sizes. However, they will only be the size of the largest breed of donkey. In saying that, if mules have a female horse as a parent, they can be as large as the size of the largest horse breed. Even though it seems like they're quite a standard hybrid, they're not. They're hard to get because their chromosomes are different. Donkeys have 62 chromosomes, whereas horses have 64. Hinnies have 63, which means in almost all offspring, they're sterile. The uneven number leads to an incomplete reproductive system. Number 3. Zebroid, Zebra, and Equids Zebras are interesting enough, but do you know what makes them even more interesting? When they're crossed with something else. Zebroids are zebras mixed with another equine to make a hybrid. 
For example, a zebra dam and a monkey sire make a donkra, and a horse sire and zebra dam make a hebra. Charles Darwin actually mentioned zebra hybrids quite a lot in his works, and they've been around since at least the 19th century. In most cases, zebras develop a form of dwarfism when they are crossbred, and that's probably because they shouldn't be messed with. Different members of equine families don't mate in the wild, so hybrids are definitely created with human intervention. and there have been so many different ones created over time. For example, pony mares and zebra stallions form zonies, and Shetland ponies with zebras are zetlands. You can even cross a zebra with a donkey to get a zenki or a zonkey, and a mini zonkey is when you cross a mini donkey with a zebra. No matter what you cross zebras with, though, they almost always have at least a few stripes. They often take on a brownish color or have a predominantly solid color on their body with a striped face. Number 2. Geep, Sheep, and Goat A geep, or shoat, is a hybrid of a goat and sheep. Even though the two are pretty similar and can be mated, it's actually not an easy process. This is because goats belong to a different genus, Copra, and they have 60 chromosomes. Sheep belong to the genus Ovis and have 54 chromosomes. When you breed them, the offspring tends to be stillborn. They also don't naturally decide to mate when paired together either. If you make them share pasture, it's not in their nature to mate with each other. This further entrenches the idea that there's quite a big genetic difference between sheep and goats. You might be thinking, I'm wrong since we have sheep goat chimera, but this is a different situation. Sheep goat chimera are born when the embryos of sheep and goats are combined. However, as rare as hybrid sheep and goats are, there have been some born alive. A male sheep managed to impregnate a female goat, resulting in live offspring with 57 chromosomes. The male geep had a woolly inner coat, a coarse outer coat, long legs like a goat, but a heavy body like a sheep. A mixed litter of kids in a female sheep-goat hybrid was also born in New Zealand from a male sheep impregnating a female goat. Some live births have also been reported in Ireland, the Czech Republic, and Germany. Number 1. Green Sea Slug, Sea Slug, and Algae Hybridization isn't exactly a common practice, with human intervention required for practically all hybrids to be born. However, there's one we didn't play a part in, and that was the sea slug. In a surprising plot twist, the green sea slug is a hybrid of a sea slug and algae. That's right, a plant. The slug, called Elysia chlorotica, close enough, is already shaped like a leaf, but it's taken this similarity one step further by actually requiring the genes of algae. It has kidnapped enough photosynthesizing organelles to actually have a plant chemical-making pathway inside its animal body. Apparently, slugs can manufacture chlorophyll, which is a green pigment that plants use to gain energy from sunlight. Radioactive tracers showed that slugs were making the chlorophyll themselves, rather than using up reserves they had gotten from algae. Researchers knew that microbes can swap genes, but they had never seen genes being exchanged from plant to animal, or vice versa. Further research also showed that unhatched sea slugs could carry algal photosynthetic genes, even when they had never encountered algae. A single word from crustacean biologist Gary Martin pretty much summed this hybrid up. Bizarre. Crossing animals with other animals is absolutely absurd, but we have proved that it's possible. But just because it's possible, should we really be doing it? What do you think about hybrids? Yes or no? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.